Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers and their coaches. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I can see what most people cannot see. And I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can be incredibly lonely. You can feel more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. Clients who are more successful, more intelligent and wealthier than you need your support more than they know and more than you can imagine. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens and the world looks different and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. In today's coaching conversation, I get on a call with Martin and I tell a story. I like to tell stories sometimes at the start of a conversation with a client to see what happens. I'm not interested in whether or not they have the same insight that I do from the story. I want to see what occurs for them. I don't care if they like it, they don't like it. It's a seed to see where we might go in a conversation. So you'll hear me tell this story and then I'll ask Martin, what does he get from it? And it takes us down a path of what could be really valuable for him. And I end the conversation by sharing with him one of my single most favorite coaching tools. In fact, the tool that if I was only allowed to take one tool with me for the rest of my life, this is it. I look forward to sharing with that with you over the next few minutes. Hey, Martin. Hi, Rich. Hey. I want to begin today, before we dive into any coaching, by telling you a little story, something that happened to me in the last few days. So I don't know about you, I've known for a few years I should probably be drinking more water, and I don't drink enough. And so I've tried over the years to do things to get myself to drink more water. Well, about a year ago, I thought I'd be clever. I bought six nice glasses and a little bamboo tray that looked really beautiful so I could fill them up every morning and take them to my office and I could finish them during the day. And I was having my, you know, my six glasses of water and, and then it felt like a great idea for a couple of days. But I think day three or four, I left them here overnight, forgot to fill them up. Or one day I forgot to wash them up and I didn't have glasses and it wasn't working. So I thought for a little bit longer and I came up with this idea to buy one of those giant water bottles they sell that has enough water for the entire day. So, I thought, well, that's, that's easy. Then I'll know I've had my water. And again, it worked for a day or two. And then day two, day three, day four, I forgot to drink it all. And the next morning, I'm, you know, it's not transparent. So I can't see how much is in there. I forgot to fill it up. Now I don't know, was, I, was it half full yesterday or a quarter full? And now I'm off track. And after a day or two, I stopped using it. Then I came across something because I kept looking and it was a water bottle that looks like this. It's transparent and it's got these measurements along the side and it tells you 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. goes from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. on one side and on the other side from 1 till 7 in the evening. I thought that's genius. What a clever idea. I can actually see it and track it. And then halfway through when it's got to the end of this bottle, I fill it up. Well, again, it worked for a couple of days until one day I forgot to fill it or I was busy. And now I get to the end of the day and I realize I'm dehydrated again. I haven't drunk. I've just had one bottle and that was it. So a few days ago, it dawned on me. This is what I need. I need two of these water bottles. (laughs) And now these two clear water bottles, the measurements on the side, so I don't need to fill them up during the day. They sit there. And it's been great. I've been drinking my water from these and I fill up a glass that I use, but I've been using these to see and track my measurements in the most simple way possible. I'm always interested in simplicity, Martin. The other day I was flossing my teeth. No, no, no. I was talking to my son about flossing his teeth. And I don't know about you, but every time I go to the dentist, she says to me, you know, your teeth look good, but you, do you floss? Have you been flossing every day? And I make this kind of embarrassed look. Well, not every day, which really means yes, for the first two days after you told me about this last time. And then for the last, well, however many weeks since I've seen you, most of them I haven't flossed. I was telling Kaleo this story and he said, well, why don't you floss before you brush your teeth, dad? And it was another one of those simple, 
but genius moments. Oh my God, if I mm-hmm. floss before, because what happens, I clean my teeth and then I'm tired or bored. But if I made it the job to floss first, I never forget to clean my teeth. I'm always interested in the simplicity on the other side of complexity. Maximizing simplicity. When you can maximize simplicity, you can generate a lot of money for yourself and for your clients. So I'm curious. What lands for you? What thoughts or insights come as I share those two little stories, Martin? It reminds me on, on many of the let's say, habit improvements I have played with over the years. And I do probably have a, more than a dozen integrated in my, over the years in my, in my daily habit, my morning ritual, getting up. And I had just a little thing that, that came up to mind. I, I do sit in the morning. I journal. I have my, my morning hour. It's I wake up like 5.30, 5 o'clock, even now when the sun is up early. And we have uh, in Germany, it's now it gets up at like 5 o'clock. It's dawning. So I, sometimes I get up very early and I have time in the morning to sit and write. So I have my morning hour before, before the whole house is going to wake up. Yep. So and my idea is whatever I put into my morning hour, it's already in my bank account mm. because it's, it's my time. Yeah. Nobody can steal it during the day away from it. I don't have to do it at the end of the day when I'm tired. So if things I want to get done in the sense for me, in the sense of energy, I put in the morning. And I realized that in Corona, I wasn't going to my Tai Chi class. I wasn't doing certain things. So I was walking out in nature, but I didn't do any physical things. So at Christmas time, my son challenged me, well, let's do some push-ups. And it was embarrassing. I couldn't do five push-ups. I wasn't able to do it because I, I hadn't practiced. Yeah. So now I put them in my morning hour. And I do my 10 push-ups in the morning. It's not a great number, but it's definitely every morning 10. Over the year, it sums up to more probably around 3,000 push-ups over the year. And nobody can take them away from me. And it, mm-hmm. it's working. It's, it, it, there's, that's exactly the thing. I put them early there. Once in a while, I forget about them or I don't feel like them. But l- after a day or two, hey, where is that morning? Yeah. I love that. That's a great catch. I, I call that front loading. It, it, it's, it's always too late if you lead it till when you need it. You put it up front. There was a year, about two years ago, when I, was, I started to do burpees. And you know the burpee where you do a push-up and you come to the standing and you jump in the air and then you go down to another push-up. That's a burpee. They're, they're tough, but I made a commitment that year to do 55 a day. Now, it didn't matter. I wasn't trying to do them in a row. I couldn't do 55 in a row. I could do about five to start with. But over a day, I do 55. And gradually I built up. And then I started to do, what they call it a ladder. I would do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, all the way down to one. I would do 55 burpees a day. I made a commitment. I did it every day for six months. Oh, that's 50,000 50, burpees. It blew my mind what I was able to accomplish. If you did 10 push-ups a day, that's 3,560 bu- push-ups, right? Even, if, even with a vacation, not day, it's, it's roughly somewhere around 3,000. It's, it's <laughs> well, that was my mistake because I, I had a vacation halfway through the year and I thought, I'll take a month off, I'll come back. And, and I found whatever the research says on how to create a habit, 21 days, 30 days, 60 days, there's different juries out and how, quite how long it takes to create a habit. I know it takes less than 24 hours to break a habit. So habits are very challenging to keep. I, I stopped that and never went back to those burpees. So I love the simplicity of 10 push-ups a day. Let me ask you from this moment, with the context of simplicity, how can I support you best? What do you want? What do you want to create? I, I like some playing around with ideas on how I can lean further into my, my zone of genius, my passion, my, where I'm really good at, 
and and come up with some ideas how I can maybe with simplicity remove things that take away energy. Mm-hmm. I think coming out of this call with having like two or three ideas on how to move more into simplicity, either myself or some or giving it to somebody else for simplicity purpose. With leveling the energy energy upwards to to spending more energy in leaning into what I really in my zone of genius in the coaching. I think these these two things have uh, somehow they are linked. Well, they're they're very related because there are things that drain us in life, and there are things that energize us. And one of the things that energizes us is being in our zone of genius. That's when you do things that fascinate you, interest you and energize you. For me, that's coaching people, like in this moment. That's creating things, ideas, programs, videos, materials, and and it's building community. Those are the three things for me. Whenever I'm doing one of those three things, I'm energized. And I try to strip out anything else other than those three things. I mentioned to you before this call how these uh, podcasts are created. So I'll say for everyone else who's, who's listening in right now, what happens is I get on a call, I say, hi, Martin, this is what will happen. And then I let you know, what, when this is finished, we'll say goodbye and you will leave. But I stay on this video and I record the intro, which because I know what's just happened and I can then, and that's it, I'm done. Once, the, once I finish recording, I press, st- st- I end the Zoom call. It gets sent to someone on my team who does all the magic in their zone of genius about putting the back end onto the front end and putting it out onto the podcast and the YouTube channel and so on. All I get to do is what I love to do. The energizing piece, my zone of genius, being with someone who I admire, being with somebody fascinating and coaching. So yeah. what strikes me is there's a really simple tool. It's one of my favorite coaching tools. If you said to me, Rich, you're only allowed to use one tool for the rest of your life. This is the one. If you said to me, Rich, what's one tool that I can only take a client through this single tool for a year and do nothing else with them would have the biggest impact on their life and their business? It would be this one. I call it an energy audit. You take a piece Mm -hmm. of paper, you draw a line down the center. On the left, you write energizers. And on the right, you put drainers, energizers and drainers. And then you use these categories. Let me give you the categories first. People, places, projects, habits, and thoughts. There are some people in our life. People, places, habits. Sorry, people, places, projects, habits, and thoughts. I'll make it real for a second, and then I'll, then I'll ask you for where, what comes for you. I can see some stuff's popping already. I, I, I shared this with a client once, and she said, you know, I said, what's, what's in the draining list? Which said, under people, my mother. And I said, what, what, what do you mean? She, like, all the t- do you want to have her out of your life? And she said, no, 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 no. But it's a Friday night. We go back to the family, the house where I grew up, to have a family dinner with me and my siblings and my mum. This is a woman in her forties. And she said, it always ends up in an argument. My mom's trying to tell me what to do. I go back to being a child because I've been this child at home. It drains me of energy. I said, well, you don't want to go to the solution, which is radical about never seeing your mom again. How about we create this differently? What if instead of going on a regular basis to that Friday evening meal at your mom's home, how we created it was she would invite her mom out to lunch once a week. They would meet at a public setting, in a restaurant. So now these were two adults meeting as peers. They'd have a great conversation. If it was draining at all, she'd say, mom, you know, I've got to run. Can't stay today. And it really brought energy back into her life and brought them back into not mother and daughter, but two adults who happen to have a family experience together. And so this isn't about, this is about looking at what energizes you, what doesn't, And then one at a time, either removing something from the list that drains you or turning it into something that energizes you. I think that's what I I hear right there. There's probably the the magic is to flip the switch. Something that has a setting that is draining 
pull out the chip, turn it around, mm-hmm. re- reassemble it and make it different, but that, that it gets energized. Yeah. That, that's, that's the best it. case scenario. You know, once in a while you can't. So there's, I have an old friend who, if we were at a party together, I'd love to introduce him to you. He's the life and soul. He's really fun. We knew each other when we were 16 years old, but a, a few years ago, we completed our friendship. I don't see him anymore socially because I, because I used to admire him so much, I think when I was 16, I default to that place when I go see him to this day. And I always end up getting disappointed in him because he's a person who's really clear when he's with you, you're the center of attention. And when you're not, he doesn't even know you exist. And it was just, it was, I knew that some of that is the work I could do on myself, but sometimes life is short, you know? And, and I decided this was not a relationship that energized me in a way that I could continue anymore. I can't tell you that was the right decision, it was a decision that really helps me freeze my energy. And that's what counts for me in this moment. It's a decision that's in your, in, your, in your zone of influence, correct? That's what yeah. you can influence. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't change him. Tried that for a long time. Didn't want to, <laughs> couldn't change me on that one. So it was, that was the, so yeah. there's a tool for you that will free you. If you use that once a week, look at what energized me this week, what drained me. Do it once a quarter. It's a great exercise to do four times a year only and take your clients through it. Lots of energy will come back. And it fits very well with the coaching math I I use with my clients, Mm -hmm. where what what is to stop, what's to do less, and what's to start and what's to do more often. And I think that's that's exactly that that's probably the stage before. Yeah. Where where everything I can, hey, what's on the left side, what's the right side, and which one do I put into the coaching math? Which one do I take out? Nice. And mix in upwards because that that was that's a great catch. You're talking about the, the next level up, right? There's something on that. You might have 17 things on the energizer list, but actually which one, if you focus on that one to the exclusion of all the others, would have 10 times the impact of all the others anyway. So that's your mathematics about multiplication. That's the next level. I think you're right. Go back to basics. Yeah. Create this list for yourself. What energizes you? What drains you? Yeah. People places. The place I'm going to tomorrow is definitely an energizer. Projects. Probably processes there as well for me. And what kind of processes are drainers and energizers for me? Or Mm -hmm. what's probably close to the habits? And thoughts, that's probably the the challenge one, the mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll play with that. And I think this is one of those moments where this is, this is what I call, I'll take someone off the hot seat because you've got the tool and, you know, I could spend the next 30 minutes with you sure. drawing these out, but you're a smart, driven, ambitious, talented man. You've got this. You know what we do? I drop the results into PK4 and then we, uh, this way I, I, I follow up anyway. So the energy flows through and yeah. So for way, anyone who's, who's listening, PK4 is Project Kairos, you're in the fourth cohort. Project Kairos is my program, my community of yeah. a group of leaders who want to focus on one thing alone, which is creating clients. And, and it's, it's fun to work with you there. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll put it in my results, my findings, my insights. Great. And um, this way, at least the energy flows back around because that's what I think it's a big thing of flowing letting energy flow. If it just stays with me, yeah, that's good. But if I if I make it a commitment to let it flow back to where yeah you you triggered it, it will just spiral up. And I think that's that's well, well, what you just told me. That's one of your energizers. You could get the insights for yourself, and that could be good. But if you share those insights with your community, it energizes you even more. It's great. Great guess. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely one. That's one way to shift it into a high energy mode. Martin, thanks for playing. Oh, well, wonderful. Thank you, Rich. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching, it was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.